Uncle Mandarin. Hi, everyone. I'm Shivam Putt. I'm Olivia Guest Host. And I'm Andrew Baird. And we are Commanderin live from my house. <laughs> this is going to be an uh, interesting Lucy Goosey episode. Uh, Olivia was in the neighborhood with our friend Andrew, and I was like, what the heck? Let's just do a live stream. It'll be a good time, and we can just sit and uh, talk about cards. Right? I mean, it's what we do. Sounds yeah. about right. Yeah. We put a spotlight on community issues, but we never, ever talk about three bad topics, uh, politics, religion, and Hearthstone. And we're probably not going to be doing that today anyways, because we just want to chill. It's a warm summer day. Very warm. And <laughs> it's going to get real hot in this steaming room, oh, yeah. let me tell you. <laughs> not, uh, we're, we're streamers, not steamers. Um, <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> But first, let's get some business out of the way. Uh, our podcast is brought to us entirely by you, the supporters at patreon.com forward slash commander and MTG or at commander and MTG.com forward slash donations, where you can get all the different links to sit and support us and help us put the lights on, bring people over, talk about cards every week, pay our hosting fees, you know, all the good things that you need to do to run a podcast. We love doing this and we want to keep doing this. So uh, we thank you. Grac- we gratefully thank you for your support. Um, however, we are also brought to you by one other person, the kind folks at Quiver Time, makers of the fine quivers, which are these amazing leather, like, you know, deck box cases. Oh, yeah, oh God, sorry, sorry. Ah, uh, the live streams. Uh, yeah, like, see, look, just like Olivia has in her hand, it's about, like, a, as long as my armish or so, <laughs> it can hold about six decks in it. They've got deck boxes, they've got sleeves. It's a fantastic product. Basically, all three of us use it. And we would use them anyways, even if they weren't sponsoring us. But they are, and we are super grateful for it. And if you guys are interested, Quiver Time on Twitter is a real great place to go. They will answer all your questions. And if you follow us at Commander and MTG on Twitter, then every month we have a giveaway where we give away one quiver and a deck box and a bunch of sleeves to um, different people, depending on what the contest of the month is. So you should follow us to find out what that's going to be. Uh, today we have a very special episode. Uh, Namely, that we're going to be talking about some of the new commanders from uh, M20, like Yarok and uh, the Gargos, Gargos the Hydra, Hydra guy. Buddy. And then, of course, um, just some random commander things. We're, gonna, we're, hit, we're, we're hanging out. We're going to have a loosey-goosey fun time. Great. We'll and chat. Yeah, so it should be pretty cool. Now, the thing is, M20 is the most surprising core set I think we've had in a long time. It's pretty nuts because, like, these cards are just ridiculous. Like, this might be some of the best uh, Wedge Legends we've gotten in a long time. Actually, yeah, they are pretty pretty sweet. Who's the, um, Kylar? Is it the... Kaikar. Kaikar, okay. Kaikar, the Jess guy. pretty tight. Yeah, he, like, he makes a spirit when you cast a non-creature spell, and mm-hmm. then you can pitch a spirit to get a red. Yes. And I feel like you can combo off with that guy or do some storm stuff, and it just seems really gross. Like, I don't know that I'm necessarily going to be playing Jess guy, but... It seems like a good time. Yeah, for sure. Um, but I am super stoked for Yarok the Desecrated, who is two and a Sultai, two black, green, and uh, blue, for a 3-5 Death Touch Lifelinker. Done, right? Perfect. Easy. Good enough. Not bad. But Sweet. it turns out that uh, when you staple a Panharmonicon to a 3-5 body, you can do some absurd things. Yeah, you ATVs can. ATVs are Hell amazing. Good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Super good. So, now, Olivia here has been brewing this deck for like a week, and we threw it out to Twitter to just see what kind of weirdo combos people would come up with, and there's some pretty we got some nuts amazing things amazing wombo combos with this. Yeah, absolutely. So, you want to tell us a little bit about what you got going on? Sure. Um, of course, my notes aren't here, but uh, I threw up on Twitter. I hope you cleaned. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tweeted on Twitter um, that I was going to build a Yarok, a Wind Grace, and a Gargos deck. And normally when I build, I have kind of like a good idea of what it is I'm going to go in doing. But on all of these, I found a bunch of ETB stuff. I found, you know, a bunch of different um, options to go with. Yeah, yeah. the standards. The, what you put in a commander deck. Staples. And I realized in all of them I had just a few spots left. So I I put it out to Twitter and to our... I know, stop it. I put it out to the community. There you go. Uh, What cards would you put in this if you were building this deck that aren't what everybody would expect? So if you're playing Yarok, I don't want to know that you're going to put in Panharmonicon. Sure, who isn't? Why not quadruple your effect? 
what bonkers card would you put in there that nobody's expecting that you think is this really spicy inclusion that isn't the first thing people think of when they see the card or when they see that commander coming out. So we got some real good answers. Um, yes, we definitely did. Just nuts good stuff. One of them I actually thought that was really interesting and I never would have thought of in the Yarrick deck was Hostage Taker. Hostage Taker. From Ixalan. Hostage Taker, of course, is a card that like lets you uh, it take a card from the play and imprison it and then you can cast it from your hand, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Oh, whoa. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that's the thing. When you're looking at, <laughs> when you're thinking about Yarok, because I'm so used to it with Panharmonicon to not, I don't necessarily think of like blue, black, green as Panharmonicon colors. No, you don't. Because yeah. those are more like going to the graveyard colors and not coming into play colors for me. Yeah, exactly. But wow, doubling your hostage takers is kind of gross. It feels a little bit also like if you were to play duplicate, right? Yeah, and who was it? Uh, I know Kaya Vess had written an article on EDA Trek about. Um, going nuts with clone and ETV triggers. So two of the cards she had recommended were um, Spark Double and Rite of Replication with Yarok. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. I didn't even realize that. I forgot that clones come into play. Uh-huh. What does that mean? So the... she said something about getting at least seven, like, Yarok triggers on the board because oh, of that. If you so... kick Rite of Replication. Yeah. Because I think Spark Double makes it non-legendary, doesn't it? Yeah. So then you can have six non-legendary Yaroks and one legendary Yarok. Oh, no. And that means you have seven Yaroks. Seven Yaroks. <laughs> and that's a lot of ETB okay. triggers. So Spark Double It is... isn't legendary, yeah. Yeah, so Spark Double is a three and a blue creature illusion that says when you may have it enter the battlefield as a copy of a creature or planeswalker you control, except with an additional plus one plus one counter if it's a uh, creature or a loyalty counter if it's a planeswalker, and it isn't legendary if that plane if that... Permanent is legendary. This is so that you can actually clone. Mm -hmm. um, legendary creature. Yeah, clone. Le yes. No, not legendary creature, but so you can clone Planeswalker. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because all Planeswalker are legends. Oh, that's right. That's, yeah. But that's also just gross. Yeah, so now you have any ETV that comes in, you have seven yards seven of that are going to see it seven. and double it. Oh, my God. So, I mean, your friends are all going to hate you because your turns just became 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Now, think about. Think. <laughs> it was so good when I saw that. It was just. Oh my god, that's things, disgusting. And that's the thing that's so great about Yarok is, again, because these colors aren't necessarily what you're thinking of for a Harmonicon effect. And yet, they are so busted, especially when you get to do them more than once. Well, I also think about like all those random dudes who are like, come to play and create a treasure token. And then you play Revel in Riches and win. Right, so you could use it with Zulaport Cutthroat, you could use it with... Um... Well, Zulaport Cutthroat is like, they leave the battlefield and... Oh, no, that's, a, yeah, that's, it's Zulaport, that's... It's, that's the there's like all the dudes There are own. people that make um, treasures. You could, uh, no, not with Revel and Riches, I was thinking... Well, like a lot, of Kaladesh yeah. Stuff, yeah. a lot of Kaladesh cards would go crazy with this. Or even if you wanted to do something really busted and really out of the way and do like an old energy counters thing... Oh. You could start getting a lot of energy oh my real God. quick Yarok with Yarok and a bunch of Yaroks. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's nuts. Because think about it. If it comes into play and comes in with like two energy counters, with Yarok you now have four, four energy four. counters. And you have more Yaroks. Oh, my God. Energy. Some of the bigger main creatures actually run uh, energy counters in mass quantity, like greens and blues. And a lot of them actually remain artifacts, too, which you throw into any deck. So... Honestly, we're brewing okay. on the fly here, the fly. and this is incredible. So, so this is where the brain stuff is happening. So, so apologies. I'm thinking now like Aetherworks Marvel. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Do it. Because Aetherworks Marvel is a card I think has been searching for a home in that EDH. That may be a new home for it. So, Marvel, of course, is the uh, mm -hmm. forecasting cost legendary artifact. When a permanent you control is put in the graveyard, you get an energy, and you pay six and look at the top uh, six of your library. And then you can cast a card without paying its mana cost. Now, that's going to the graveyard. So let's see. Is there a way we can double that? But you don't it, really care about that as much as all the energy that you're yeah. getting from you're, other All stuff. the energy you're going to be getting from all the other friends. And now you get to start sifting. Yeah. like And basically mini omniscience on these. Oh, that's nuts. Oh, that's yucky. You could make a Yarok energy counters deck. I'm, Who's going to see that coming? Well, that's what I'm going to do I now. Apparently really, everybody yeah. on this podcast now, but I mean... <laughs> well, dude, I, energy is energy is was, my favorite mechanic that I haven't been able to use. Right, and I'm that super was the stoked. thing. That, like, it's something that, okay, you see it and it comes out and it's kind of spicy. You're like, oh man, an energy thing. I haven't seen this in a hot minute. And then 
you know, it's limited oh, yeah. to really only one set of cards and what can you do with it? But now if you have something like this, if you start bringing in, you know, your my friend and yours that everybody hates and that's okay, Dead Eye Navigator, oh, God. you start bouncing things, bouncing you can start things. accumulating energy at a very high pace and now all of a sudden you've got this extra, like, mechanic no one's really using or expecting. Oh, what can I you do like with... this. You guys, we're building a deck on the Yeah, this is going to be real dumb. Um, Ooh, we. Whenever uh, so, contraband kingpin. I'm looking at here, which is a blue and black. Whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, scry one. So I'll take six scry triggers, sure. Yeah, I mean, why not? But um, it just seems like, like for instance, all the modules where when something enters the battlefield, you get an energy or you get a counter, or you get some nonsense, mm -hmm. like a decoction, which is an creature enters the battlefield under your control you get an energy and then you pay four and tap it to return target creature you control to its owner's hand which means that you can create a whole bunch of energy bounce that card back to your hand and replay it to get all those what etb energy? triggers again and i feel like my panharmonicon deck that i ran <gasps> is gonna just get real gross real gross well, um, of course you can have panharmonicon in this deck well you're too. gonna so have why, to. i mean why not have eight enter the battlefield triggers let's say that you get that that uh spark double and and uh, write a replication kicker in there. That's, man, you're cooking with gas now. So look at this thing, right? Electrostatic Pumbler was this standard, like, bomb from limited, or like a limited bomb, I guess it was. When it enters the battlefield, you get three energies. You pay three energies, and it gets plus X plus X, where X is its power. So you put it into play, and even with one Yarok, you get six energy instead of three. With, uh, like, a Yarok and a Panharmonicon, you get six energy, nine energy. And you can just start, kind of chaining into dumb town and because this because it's green any of your like stupid ramp dudes come into play give you three forests not god, one orion reef hydra then or orin reef hydra oh god orin reef hydra when, is gonna be real that's silly. the and land enters etb and you get to throw uh counters on it if yeah it has to be a forest you now you get to double the counters double if that. yarok's out mm -hmm. yeah orin reef hydra is I, I do awesome. love orin reef hydra me too <laughs> or on uh let's see not doran <laughs> <laughs> oh buddy uh let's see orin reef hydra yeah. landfall oh my god landfall yep oh landfall Don't is gonna deal. be real real gross Ooh. yes so landfall so the orin reef hydra is a six mana five five trample when a land enters the battlefield under my control, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. If it's a forest, you put 2. If it's a forest plus a Yarok, you put 4. If it's a forest, forest plus a Yarok plus a Panharmonicon, you put 6. 6. I would like to have a 11-11. We going to get real spicy. So the other uh, another one that would get real real bad real fast and maybe a game ender is uh, Josu Vess. Josu Vess. Kick yes. him. You kick him and you get 16, 16 zombies. zombies. <laughs> That's you would have to hard cast them for how much? Ten total. Ten, I think. Yeah. But if that's you're able, gross. But if you're able to still keep a panharmonicon or uh, Yarok out, sixteen zombies, including is him, gross. I'm pretty sure that's thirty six power on the board for ten mana. Mm hmm. There's a zombie that's also uh, when a zombie comes into play, you do a point of damage to everything. Yes. Um. <laughs> he's in my little like deck. noxious zombie or something like that. He's in my uh, not Grim noxious Rage. ghoul. No, not noxious ghoul. But I know exactly who you're talking but yeah, about. So, but yeah. So yeah. Oh man. You so can if you have like, people. I mean, we're now in Christmas land. But if you got Joseph S. come out and bring out sixteen, what? twenty-four zombies and just nug everybody for twenty-four. Sixteen, all with menace too. <laughs> oh, that's yuck. That's so yuck. I guess it would work in this deck too. Something someone suggested actually for Win Grace, but it would work in this. Um, I'm gonna see if I can find this person quickly as I scroll and give them credit at the same time. Here it is. Uh, at too much do su suggested this combo. It is uh, Gerard Golgari Lichlord. So he gets plus one, plus one for each creature card in your graveyard. He's one black and green. Sack another creature. Each opponent loses life equal to the sacrificed creature's power. Sack a swamp and a forest and return them from your graveyard to your hand. So you have Jared out. Fine. You mm -hmm. play Dark Depths. <laughs> oh, no. Yep. Oh, oh. Which is, you know, comes into play with ten ice counters on it. Pay three, remove an ice counter from it. When Dark Depths has no ice counters, sacrifice it. If you do... Put an indestructible, legendary, 2020 black avatar creature token with flying named Merit Lage into play. So the fun part comes with Thespian Stage. Yeah, well, Thespian Stage and Dark Depths is an old school combo. Right. But now with Gerard, you sacrifice your Merits Each. and hit twenty everybody for 20. Each opponent. Each sacrifice opponent. 
Oh, that's... N but if you have something that doubles ETB effects, or you have something... No, that... that not, not, not this, but with the... Uh, no, 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 that's no. coming into play. That's fine. But even then, since you're running green, and you want to double all your stuff anyway, that's are you running green. doubling season? Are you running parallel lives? <laughs> Get two, and just end the game. It's a three to four, four, hmm. four card combo. Well, I mean, so it take a bit of work to get out there. Now, right. someone in chat just mentioned uh, Obby Bob Nicholas, the following. Oh, absolutely. Who is obviously a hands down slime duck in any uh, Yarok deck. When a land enters the battlefield under your control, target player loses three life. Uh, you may have them, and if they do, you put three pl uh, plus ones on Ob Nicholas. So you put a land, you can choose two targets and get plus six, plus six on Ob Nicholas. Yeah. And obviously with Scape Shift, you can pitch all your lands, bring them all like back into play. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> and then if you have the new land from um, the new land that just came out. Is, that the, is it the zombie land? Yeah. Yeah. Field of the Dead. Field of the, Field of the Dead. Dead from M20. When it or another land enters the battlefield under your control, if you control seven or more lands with different names, Pretty you make a 2-2 black zombie. Mm -hmm. are, there any, are there any cards that uh, make your creatures count as lands too? A lot of things that make your lands count as creatures, exactly. but That's not why the, I'm other wondering if there's nothing, the other way around. Exactly. Anything the other way, because that would just be even funnier. Because then you could have that out only have like a couple lands, but if they all got to count both ways, <laughs> I know it's like, oh, buddy, yeah, but, he would work in Yarok. Uh, would he though, Rixnathies? Uh, but no, because he enters the battlefield tap with five slumber counters. Yarok no would make what. him have ten slumber counters. No, that part's no. true, but you can also get him out before you have Yarok. Because I'm wondering if you, what if you spark doubled him? Spark double ricks with these? Because then Spark would enter. With. Maybe not. No. No, that you, that's a good. number. Let's not. It is that doesn't sound like a good idea. Um, but obviously you've got Risen Reef. Oh, yeah. You know, play well, you an mean, elemental and then just. So then, and then in that same vein with elementals, you have Shriek Maw, who gets an ETB trigger. Shriek Maw, Mull Drifter. Mull Drifter. Uh, so any then of... you, can only, you can do like an elemental tribal and. Yara. ATB sub theme mm -hmm. between the two of them and have multiple win cons with that. Oh, that's gross. Yes, Splendid Reclamation. Splendid Reclamation gets all the lands out of your uh, graveyard. Uh huh. And I love I mean, Splendid Rec. Rec is obviously an auto include for Wind Grace. For Wind Grace. Yeah, see, that's the other thing. We were also talking about uh, putting things into Wind Grace because Wind Grace is a uh, I mean, nut. Oh, he's so good. He's so good. And, and it's, I, it's funny because I had a Jund Commander in Prosh for so long and. Finally, it was the very first deck I built, but RIP, I did take Prosh apart because it was also the first deck I built, so there was no synergy. It was just a bunch of cards that shared the right colors and occasionally made tokens to sacrifice to Prosh. The problem with Prosh is you if you build Prosh, then it's just busted. Right. Prosh is not a fun deck. It's just going to win. Prosh is super fun for me because it wasn't busted because I had no yeah. idea what I was doing. Or you're playing a like hell and not Prosh. Right. And... People would be like, what are you doing with this? Like, I'm having fun. So I took Prash apart to finally build a different gem commander, and I landed on Wind Grace, of course, but it took me like until almost the next commander set to come out to actually do it. So I'm completely fresh on all oh, yeah. this land matter stuff and everything. Well, I mean, I'm, so doing, I'm, I'm learning a lot as I go on that. I'm building my Estrid deck still, so I know what it's like oh, to just man. be like, That's, oh yeah. Bant Chantress is so Oh, it's going to be a money. real gross and unpleasant yeah, deck. So this deck, it basically requires... I, I get a million draw triggers, mm -hmm. and then with each draw trigger, I replace it with a bounce something back to your hand trigger. Ah, okay. So I end up just wiping the table, and it's it feels so mean just looking at the cards that I almost don't want to play it. But I feel like there's some tables where you just got to be like that guy. Yeah. And just like, yeah, sorry. So another card for um, Yarok that's worth talking about is our our friend Muldrotha. Muldrotha. Yes. Muldrotha lets you pull cards from... Like, you can play cards from your graveyard, right? One of any type from your graveyard. Mold. Yes. Each Mold of Drotha your the Great Tide. During each of your turns, you may play up to one permanent card of each permanent type from your graveyard. Yeah, so you get all of your evoke dudes, evoke them, get their trigger, evoke they the die, and then you bring them back. With Muldrotha. I wonder if you... If it play... If I could... No, it's a perm. So when you play, can you evoke a creature from your graveyard? I don't know. With Muldrotha? Because Muldrotha said play, but evoke triggers. 
are, let's see here. Follow the normal timing permissions and restrictions. You guys, we're going to have the best time. Also an elemental three points. Yeah. Yeah. yeah theme points. Exactly. Oh, Molly, yeah. So let's oh see. Uh, yeah. yeah, there's some there's some serious spice that can happen with Moldrotha. It's oh. pretty incredible. Or, if it has uh, an alternative cost, yard. you can cast it for that cost instead. Hey, there it is. Oh, that's let's, disgusting. Let's yeah. talk about evoking from the graveyard with so Moldrotha. <laughs> we're going to evoke Moldrifter from the graveyard with Moldrotha and Yarok in play. Yeah. Thus getting for three mana four cards. Yes. Let's also talk about the gross things that happen to be in Yarok's colors, like taking extra turns. And <laughs> well, because you the have temporal scenario, exactly. You have temporal <laughs> extortion in black, which, by the way, nobody ever sees coming. It's four black, um, as in literally four black. Risen Reef is green and blue. Correct. Yarok is blue, black, and green. Yes, you can play Yarok in Risen Reef. Other way around. Oh, sorry, vice versa. Yeah. Um, what was it? Sage of like Sage of Hours or something. Yeah. So, Sage of Hours, a blue card from Theros, a mythic that uh, says when you cast a spell that targets Sage of Hours, put a plus one, plus one counter on it, uh, and you remove five from it to take an extra turn after this one. So there are lots of ways to get plus one, plus one bonus counters on there. Absolutely. And then you can kind of just go crazy then. So then the other one I was talking about, and we mentioned this on another podcast, is um, Temporal Extortion. Which is super gross. It's, again, four black, as in black, 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 black. When you play Temporal Extortion, any player may pay half his or her life rounded up. If a player does, then you may counter Temporal Extortion. Take an extra turn after this one. I thought you had to pay the half life. No. Nope. Someone else does. Oh, that's not any nice. Player. So either you get an extra turn, <laughs> rolling four black, because God knows what you're doing at that point. Or they have to pay half of their life total, round it up, just to add insult to injury, to stop you from doing it. So it becomes this neat little detente at the table of, well, who's going to take the bullet? <laughs> and the black player taking one extra turn's not that bad. That's always seemed... that bad. <laughs> oh, that's not right at all. It's so good. Oh, Nobody like sees game. it coming. It must be incredible. Black doesn't run extra well, turns, so then you do, and that's what's amazing about it. I don't it. know. I, I love watching when, when colors do things you don't expect. In, like, when, for instance, Josh Lee Kwai... Oops, I dropped something. When Josh Lee Kwai and Rachel Agnes got into that counter war on oh, Game Nights. Oh, yeah. And it was like, hey, uh, you're playing... None of them were playing blue. Yep. One was playing like black, white, and the other was playing like red, white. Yeah. And they got into a counter war. That is the way you play commander. It's nuts. Yep. Yep. Um, <laughs> yeah. What else? Oh, hold on. Let me. I'm just getting my list. You guys should. No, but the thing is, Yarok though is super interesting because I think there's so many neat just ways. Like I think you could probably make a crazy sapperling deck with Yarok. With all these things that come into play, make a friend. Especially if you have Slimefoot out, yeah. Oh, yeah. You can get a token deck out of this. Like, you could probably oh, yeah, do a really cool, sure. like, uh, aristocracy type deck. But, I mean, not so much because ETB, well, you, aristocrats are probably better with, like, But you can run so queso. far onto the Simic side with this, too, with ETBs with counters, because you've got the green Every blue. card with Graft on it becomes yeah. nuts. Oh, yes, it does. Yeah. Because Graft gives you plus one, plus one counter. Or whatever X, Graft X counters on there. Right. But there's like the land, Land of War Reborn or something, comes into play with a plus one, plus one counter. Oh. And then you get two plus one, plus ones that you can move off of it. But I think... Start a chain. Yeah. Oh, that's some oh nuts stuff in there. Okay, so let's see what else. What other spicy things can Man, you say? So we got Yarok host- is just we, gross. we covered hostage taken. I think that's one of the things... This deck, or excuse me, this commander almost reminds me of Brea in a way. There's... 80 different paths you can take with it and all of them work. You can have multiple win cons. You can have multiple uh, methods of attacking Yeah, you can build Crazy Brea or... I wish I... Well, it's not... You can build Crazy Brea and Sane Brea in the same deck. It's all a matter of how you want to play it. What you do is you use Golos as your commander and put Brea and Yarok in the same deck. (laughs) I mean, I'm, I'm not saying no to that. So what other one? I have uh, someone mentioned Styre of Stagnation in Yarok. They'll, uh, your opponents will mill for, you'll draw for, and you can bajuka bug two people with Yarok. Oh, that's not nice at all. It's not nice dirty. at all. dirty. Although, you know what else I'm thinking is, like, Coiling Oracle triggers twice. And uh, Coiling Oracle 
It, it, frilled Mystic and Mystic Snake would... They... Counter two spells? Well, yeah. weird? Yeah. Uh, but I think they have... Don't they have card draw on them? One of them does. Uh, maybe. I okay. don't remember. Uh, oh my god. Graft creatures do come in gross. Oh yeah. Graft they? is going to be a real, real... Yeah, wow. And then there's all these cards that are like, if it comes to play with the plus one, plus one counter. Like, for instance, Hardened Scales. Yeah! Hardened Scales, if it comes into play, or it gets a plus one, plus one, you put it on it, and you put two. And just just sometimes the small value is great. I don't know. I'm super excited. Yarok is just kind of disgusting. We're very, very excited. Yeah, Yarok is fun, super cool. It's going to be a fun build for sure. <laughs> fun, fun build. Oh, man. So what else we got on here? Uh, Crater Hoof, obviously. Yeah, and all I mean, of Crater like, Hoof's friends. Yeah, He's well, just like, hey, uh, trigger twice and just slam for a million. For sure. Oh, man. The new Ronus. The new Ronus. Uh, God General Ronus. Oh, Ronus. That's a double oh, TV, I believe, yeah. right there. If you don't have uh, Crater oh, Hoof, like goodness. I don't. I don't have, a, I don't have Crater Hoof in Okay, my so God Eternal Ronus is three and two green. He's legendary <gasps> creature, zombie god, a 5-5. Five five. He has death touch. When God Eternal Ronus ETBs, double the power of each other creature you control until the end of turn. Those creatures gain vigilance until the but end. But they don't of get turn. trample, which has been my problem. But you ha- you're running green. You can give anything. Just get Ni- uh, Bow and Nylea. Not Bow and Nylea. Get Nylea. She gives everybody trample. Mm-hmm. When God Eternal Ronus dies or is put into exile, <laughs> yeah, three, put him five. from top th- t- third from the top. But double plus double. Oh is no! It's still a lot. It's still. A oh, lot. that's a lot. Still a lot to deal with. <laughs> Doubling your double is kind of disgusting. I mean, just and that's the thing. You could put trample on one of your things and maybe end a game. Sure, if they have all the chump blockers, they're gonna have to send them at just one creature to get to stop it from coming through. The... What is cytoplasm manipulator? Cytoplasm manipulator's busted because then you get four counters on cytoplasm manipulator. That you can then move around. Cytoplasm manipulator mm-hmm. two. It's from old Ravnica, right? Yeah, yeah. it's a well gate whatever. It gate, is. Yeah, uh, two blue blue creature human wizard mutant. Uh, <sighs> cytoplasm zero zero. Graft two. So with Yarok or Pan, it'll double. A blue and tap the Cytoplast oh, Manipulator. Gain control of target creature with a 1 1 counter on it as long as Cytoplast Manipulator yeah, remains play. in play. Oh, you can gain gross. at least three right there. Oh, that's gross. But the thing I was looking at is the card right next to it Cytoplast Rootkin, which is a graft for when it enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on each other creature you control with a plus one plus one counter. <laughs> and then do that twice. Do that twice. Okay. And then do it again because you've got hardened scales. Yeah. And then. Oh, we can live our, uh, you guys, our crazy so Abzan dreams here. there's so many crazy ways to work with this. Well, you can't live to complete Abzan dreams. No, but you can you grab all your but... Abzan clan green guys. Uh, oh, guys. this is nuts. Yarok has so many flavorful options. Yarok this is, is really fun. nasty. Yarok's very so nasty. So I've noticed is we're, we're leaning towards creature-heavy related stuff. It says permanence. So we Correct. Have, have we even thought about enchantments and other lands involved that could benefit from this too? I mean... What enchantments could you start? What enchantments have with? ATB? I'm. I'll. I will start looking. Because there's also like the fun guys, like just how you flash past um, meteor golem, which is you know come to the play, destroy target permanent. Okay, I'll do that twice. Just new two. Like two that right seems there. great. That seems real, real good. Like uh, in one of the games I was playing against Olivia this week, I had eternal display. I, Eldrazi Displacer and Duplicant. Oh. And you could bounce it and just start... <laughs> no. And then with a Panharmonicon, I could just start going and, like, wiping the table with, like, Duplicant triggers. But you could put Duplicant, because he's got a little list, into Yarok so and just the, get nuts town. There are things like Path of Discovery. Oh. oh, yeah. Which is an enchantment for three and a green. Oh, Whenever a creature ETBs under your control, it explores. And again, exploring is revealing the top card of your library, putting that card in your hand if it's a land. Otherwise, put a 1-1 counter on the creature... And put the card back or put it into your graveyard. Yeah, you know what else does that in Yarok Scholars? Hey. Jade Light Ranger. Jade yeah, Ranger. it does. Explore, then explore again, then explore again, and then explore, then explore again. again. <laughs> then explore again. You can explore. Then ex- yeah. <laughs> it's just like, you can just, explore. Yeah, exactly. Keep exploring. <laughs> and oh, it's gross. It's gross. Oh, my goodness. You could probably build that, like, uh, that black green explore deck that was in standard for a while there and just kind of go nuts on this another one that people have suggested is conjurer's closet with your rock conjurer's closet conjurer's closet that's the yes. artifact that allows you at your end step 
I believe so. You found something out? Is Conjurer's it? Closet. Five for an artifact. At the beginning of your end step, you may exile target creature you control and then return it back to the battlefield under Yeah, so it'll So you can trigger. start flashing things, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great include. Whoa, what? Uh, that one, too. I think it's, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, here's this. Um, this is from at Mike Wild Speaker, so veracity on this one just because I'm not a judge. Here's one strange rules interaction in Yarok that I just learned. When Yarok's in play, Necromancy has oddly unique oracle text that will let you bring back two creatures from the graveyard, but only one will get enchanted. Necromancy leaves the battlefield, both still die. Uh, Necromancy is two and a black for an enchantment from Visions. It is a wallow text. Oh, yeah. It's, uh... But, uh, yeah, apparently mm -hmm. it'll let you search for... And it's like one of the grotiest Two creatures from the seen. graveyard, yeah. One of them will be enchanted by Necromancy, and then if both... If Necromancy leaves play, still both of those creatures would leave, but fascinating. All right, well, that's, I mean, three for uh, two creatures out of your yard isn't bad. Prime Speaker Zagana enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it, where X is the greatest power among other creatures you control. Twice. Well, and then when it battles, enters the battlefield, draw a card equal to the powder. Twice. So you guys, this deck is gross. This is, gonna, this is a great deck. I think something to note here with Prime Speaker Zagana, um, I want to give a shout out to DJ about explaining how Prime yes. Speaker um, it runs differently with ETBs on the first ability. Prime Speaker Zagana enters the battlefield with X 1 1 counters on it. It doesn't. That actually just twice. means it just enters flat out, just with that many. Unfortunately, Panharmonicon or Yark will not be able to double. That first that ability. First However, the second ability still you does. You still get to draw. You still have a when element in Absolutely. front of Pirate Speaker Zagana. So, uh, I That's have That's right. There's no when in front of it. Mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah. I have Prime Speaker Thank Zagana. Thank you at Jumbo Commander at for Jumbo that. Commander, yeah. I have Prime Speaker actually running in my, my rune deck, mm -hmm. and that rule still applies there. If you have rune out and you play Prime Speaker Zagana on that spot, just well, enters as a 5-5. Five, five. But, double the ETB, you know, uh, ruins a 4-4. Four, four, Makes her a five five. You double that ten cards. <laughs> That's gross. That's, That's how gross. I remember that interaction. So another another friend on Twitter uh, suggested Risen Reef and Zendikar's Royal with Finale of Devastation slash Concordant Crossroads or Chroma's Memorial. Something to give haste with Yarok. Right. Draw your entire deck, make a huge elemental army, and swing for the fences. Is apparently <laughs> what the uh, the gist of that is. Let's see what oh, else. Man. Obviously, Hissy okay. Cobra, or Hissy Cobra, duh, Lotus Blood Cobra, craze. Lotus Hissy would be a good one. Uh, Blood Crazed Paladin, when it enters the battlefield, the plus one plus one counter for each card that died this turn. That, that, that card also so basically flash. just like, Yes, it does have flash, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, uh, that's gross. Um, <laughs> oh my god. There are so many disgusting ways to do it. Guys, this is incredible. It's this so is... flexible. I think that's the biggest reason why I think I'm going to enjoy building this deck. The well, flexibility and the endurance on this I, deck is astounding, is, and honestly. And I, I feel like that's one of the things that can get kind of lost when people do deck techs is that so often, especially if you're making like a, a video on something like this, is that you have to kind of pick a lane and stay in it for the deck tech instead of saying, here are all the possible different ways you can go with this because there are so many, many. for this commander oh. that it could be overwhelming otherwise. Bloodspore Thrynax. Oh, for a 2 and 2 green, a 2 2 lizard with Devour 1. Each other creature you control enters a battlefield with an additional X 1 1 counter on it, where X is the number of 1 1s on Bloodspore. Are you for real? <laughs> so Devour could be another hefty mechanic. Oh, yeah, I think Devour could be great. I yeah. think uh, Proliferate could be great. Mm -hmm. I think that. Um, so, Body double. <laughs> yeah, here's another really fun one. Um, just because we were talking about non-creatures with ETBs. Mm -hmm. Hedonist Trove, which is five black black for an enchantment from the mm -hmm. cons block. <laughs> when Hedonist Trove enters the battlefield, exile all cards from target opponent's graveyard. You may play land cards exiled with Hedonist Trove. You may cast non-land cards exiled with Hedonist Trove, but you can't cast more than one spell this way each turn. Mm. So exile two people's yards and then just start playing their stuff. Why not? And then there's always the, you know, the basics like Borderland Ranger. Mm -hmm. It comes into play, you get to ramp twice. Yep. Oh, man. This is, there's just some nuts, nuts things. 
Bounding Crisis comes into play. You can tap or untap target creature, which means you can go kind of crazy with your untap tri triggers. Uh, all right, the card from Battle Bond that I've been trying to find a use for. Which Bramble one? Sovereign. Oh, Bramble Sovereign. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Two and two green for a 4-4 four, four Dryad that whenever another non-token enters the battlefield, you pay one and a green. If you do, that creature controller creates a token copy of that creature. So what would happen is it comes into play and you get two ability, two chances to pay one and a green to make two copies of whatever that creature is. And that's anybody's creature. So you can clone their things. That's nuts. Um, God, this card is going to be just disgusting in like everything. Someone recommended Dire Undercurrents. Three and a hybrid blue-black, hybrid blue-black. Enchantment. Whenever a blue creature comes into play under your control, uh, comes into play, that was that count as ETBs? Yes. Okay. You may have target player draw a card. Whenever a black creature comes into play under your control, you can have target player discard a card. That's nuts. That's you how you have a Spice. <laughs> oh, gross. Oh, it's gross, gross, gross. I like spice. Yeah, it's like, I mean, good. there's just so many silly, silly cards you could do. And <laughs> Ooh, and Gaunty, uh, Lord of Luxury. Gaunty, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, you ball. can, like, go to two so people's... start, uh-huh. Yeah, I'm just, like, I don't know. It's just... Enter the Battlefield is, like, one of the most common things in Magic. And you can just kind of... I mean, think about, like, Tireless Tracker, right? Mm -hmm. Whenever When you play a land, you create a clue. Play a land, create two clues. Fleshbag Marauder. When it enters the battlefield, each player sacrifices a creature. How about we do a lot of times? Yeah. Um, oh, it's yucky. Yeah, it's all gross. This falls the first step. Yeah. So then someone said Amulet of Vigor. Amulet of Vigor, one of my Yara. favorite cards. Well, why don't you know what it is? It untaps everything. Yeah, Amulet of Vigor. It's a uh, one ETB. When a permanent under the battle tapped under your control, untap it. I use it in my zombies deck so that yep. all my slow zombies don't. Uh huh. But uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, uh -huh. so it's not a double, but it's gonna get. Everybody. No, but it just means that all these things that come to play tapped, that because you're gonna have a lot of things that are like, oh, we make it come to play tapped because that balances out the ETB trigger. What if it didn't? It's gonna include a lot of lands mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Enter like the battlefield mm -hmm. tap too. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's also actually. Or dance of many. Yes. Uh, Dance of Many is a wall of text card from Dance the of Many days. is a wall of text, so let's do this. All right, it's an enchantment from Lord knows what. The Chronicles and the Dark. It's from the Dark. It is from the Dark. This All is right, one of my is... favorite cards when I was a kid. It's too blue. Literally As just blue, blue, blue. When Dance of the Many enters the battlefield, put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of target non-token creature. When it leaves the battlefield, exile that token. When the token leaves the battlefield, sacrifice Dance of Many. And then it's got an upkeep cost. And then an it. upkeep cost of the of the main cost. Yeah. Oh, so what this nasty. is, is you put it into play, you can create a copy of, you can carry two copies of things, or a copy of rather two different for things. For two. For two, and it's just an upkeep of two, whatever. Well, and I mean, if you have something that's going to untap everything or give it haste and just swing in with oh, them, it's who cares gross. if they disappear? Sack Dude, them before they go. There's so many clone effects that you can just kind of... Go nuts with. Yeah. Um, well, I feel like, I mean, like, I think we've got a lot of good stuff yeah. in the dark. Should we talk about All our right. Hydra buddy? Sure. What do you got for Hydra guy? Mm -hmm. Hydra guy, you know what? Let Which me pull one is up. he? Let me... Gorgos? Gor Gargos. Gargos. Gargle. Gargle. Gargamel. We have, we have Yargle and Gargle now, so we need Bargle. Gargos. We need Bargle, Wargle, and Rargle. No one Bargles with Yargle. No so, Gargos, the right Vicious Watcher for three and three green, He's six mana. Right 8-7 Vigilance, which is, uh, that's a lot. He's <laughs> so busted. Uh, Hydra spells cost four less to cast, which is nuts with Hydras. And then, um, yeah, seriously, Thrama King, uh, all of the reanimator enchantments have disgusting Oracle text. Mm. But yeah, so, Gargos, whatever creature you control becomes a target of a spell, Gargos Vicious Watcher fights up to one target creature you don't control. And so this guy is... I think easy way to do it is Hydra Tribal. Of course. But the other thing is, if I cast a giant growth on my creature, I can make Gargos fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's pretty nuts. So. so the deck as I had it built is a lot of Hydras and then a lot of one or two uh, targeted spells. Uh, one, co one cost, two cost targeted spells. So you're going to cast 
harden scale or not harden scales you're going to cast giant growth or you're going to do you know heroic intervention something like that uh let's see what else i got here lace with moon glove give somebody death touch draw a card and then yard and uh gargos fights fights it sure why not let's do it there are plenty of cards out there that have um that are at instant speed that you can use for target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature oh man bristle hydra needs to go into uh Yarok. Yeah! You come to the counter. battlefield, you get three energy counters? Yes. <laughs> Thank yes. you. Oh, but then pay three, so look at what you would get twice. So we're already going back to Yarok because we found something spicy. So you pay three energy, put a plus one, plus one on Bristling Hydra, and it gains hexproof until the end of the turn. Yeah, I love this just card. keep... Oh, it's gross. If you get six on him, then you get to do it twice. Oh, and yeah. Oh, my goodness. But there was a Hydra that I was thinking about that worked with this guy. So first off, Genesis Hydra Obviously. is nuts. Uh, but, like... Who the heck was a Hydra that was... There's some gross, gross Hydras here. There are... All the Hydras are oh, pretty all nasty, to be fair. Mm -hmm. Also, Primal Vigor works great in Gargos. Because all of a sudden, if you have things like Orin Reef Hydra, which is already now cheaper and you're starting to... If you're running it mono green, since that's what you'd be doing if, if he's at the helm, um, you get to be casting forest so then Orin Reef Hydra gets two one one counters. If you have something like Primal Vigor you get more. Oh is it Mallow Master said Hydra Broodmaster costs just GG. Sure does. So Hydra Broodmaster of course is the four and two green seven seven. Which of course I would love to play on turn two. Why not? <laughs> that says when it becomes monstrous create X X X green Hydra creature tokens. <laughs> Ta da So that's Another great card in this, in uh, Gargos, specifically because of Gargos's ability, is Bounty of Might from uh, Guilds. Or, uh, yeah, Allegiance. Right? Ravnica Allegiance. Yeah. So Bounty body. of Might, yes. No, it's Guilds of Ravnica. I was right the first time. It's every, All the buildings are facing the right side. So the cool thing about Bounty of Might um, is, well, the not cool thing about it is its mana cost, which is four green green. It's an instant, but if Gargos is out... Target creature gets plus three, plus three until end of turn. Target creature gets plus three, plus oh, three until end of turn. Target creature. So you plus get three. to fight three times with Yargo or Gargos. <laughs> Yargos. Gargos. I don't know. Yara, Gargos, and Yargo. I'm just Yargo. all up in my head. So you get three targeting creature triggers. If you target Gargos, you now get to make him humongous. So he'll be, what, 11, 10 oh when he God. fights? That's going to be nuts, though. Another card that was suggested getting put in here was Grathama and uh, fighting Grathama and, and Gargos if you need to draw some cards. Grothama is, of course, a gigantic worm that does uh, dumb things. Yes. I've never been able to figure out how to use that card. So I thought it was actually really clever to have in here if you Grotham need Grotham City. Grothama All Devouring. Three green green. Uh, legendary creature, a worm. It is a 10-8. Other creatures have whenever this creature attacks, you may have it fight with Grathama all devouring. When Grathama leaves the battlefield, each player draws cards equal to the amount of damage dealt to Grathama this turn by sources they controlled. So, like I said, if you put anything that makes him big enough to survive a hit from Grathama onto Gargos, do you need to draw 10% of your deck? Tight. Let's do it. But Grathama's still got to die for you to get those cards. Well, yeah, and if you hit him with Gargos with a plus three, I plus guess three, you, then... Oh, it counts the damage dealt, not the... Uh-huh. Money, 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 money. That's dumb. That's money. dumb. Yeah. Uh, greater Goods in the same thing. It's two green, green. It's an enchantment. Sack a creature, draw cards equal to the sack I creature's power. Good. Yep. Then discard three cards. Um, obviously, if you need to start sifting... <laughs> Momentous Fall is fantastic. That's another card draw engine for this. The problem is I'm looking at all these Hydras and I still can't stop thinking about Yaros, or Yargos. Because, <laughs> because so many of them have ETBs. Because X3, X and 3 for Lifeblood Hydra, which is uh, enters the battlefield with X plus 1 plus 1 counter. When it dies, you gain life and draw cards equal to its power. <laughs> which is, it enters the battlefield, double the thing. Now, if, if there was a way we could get a four-color deck so that we could also play Tasa. So that you would get it coming and going? I mean, everyone's going to see you coming and hate you for this, but Attracta. Oof. She's the colors. Yes, Attracta. If you don't want to be Attracta, you want to run Saskia. 
because then you get oh, all no. this mess. You get all these triggers with uh, fighting stuff and everything like that, but you get red and white and black. And when Sasuke is entering the battlefield, any damage you deal to one opponent, no matter what the source is, as long as it's a, a combat damage source, gets dealt to somebody else at the same time as soon as you announce them. So Jesus. Sasuke can open those doors as far as what colors you get. Because now you get Gruul stuff, you get Orzov stuff, you get Golgari stuff and Boros stuff. and it get, That would get real nasty. So if you wanted to Ooh. expand there, what you could do is use Sasuke or another uh, everything but blue commander and basically make Gargos your hidden and just get it out there as fast as you can with, like, Worldly Tutor or something Gargos like Gargos going to be real fun. I have a feeling that Gargos is going to be kind of a linear commander to build, but sometimes you just want to have a pile that's, of hydras. That's the thing. Like, I, as we've discussed on this very podcast, I don't play green a lot. So for me to make a mono green deck and then yeah. just be like, hey, guess what, guys? I'm going to stomp on everything. That's you pretty gotta fun. You're going to go to Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, Vastwood Hydra. There's a, but there's an ETB on Vastwood Hydra. Of course, it Kindred Summons is in there. An Overwhelming Stampede, Vigor, because why not block all the damage that's coming into them instead of make them end. huger? Vigor, friends, is three. Green, green, green. It's a creature elemental incarnation. This is a Trample and a 6-6. Six, six. If damage would be dealt to another creature you control, prevent that damage. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on that creature for each one damage prevented this way. When Vigor is put into a graveyard from anywhere, shuffle it into its owner's library. That's great. Nasty. That's great. It's so good. All right, so... Wow, it's, we're coming up on our hour, man. That's I pretty know. nuts. Well, we're talking <laughs> about fun stuff. Yeah, this has been great. But So, you, you're trying to build... What do you want to bring to Vegas? Well, I have like 13 decks now because I, <laughs> I got a little ahead of myself. Um, so I, I have a Yarrick almost finished. And then, I, like I said, I, I, I tweeted that, help me figure out these last couple spots. And I'm pretty much going to rebuild the thing after oh, everybody yeah. gave like, me all by these. By the last like, couple, you mean build my deck completely again from scratch. Well, exa- that's more or less, I didn't expect the, so many people to have so many different answers for it, which it's was really nuts. the thing. There's like 30 different directions to go with that deck. Yeah, there are. And I think the thread has about, I think it's like almost 170 replies of people saying, hey, this card would be great for it. You should check out this combo. And this actually works in more than one because uh, Wind Grace's colors as well, a lot of them are um, green black uh, cards that work in both of them. And after seeing that, like I was pretty sure on the direction I wanted to take. And it's like, well, how do I take it six directions at one time? And uh, because of that, uh, Yarrick's actually getting kind of scaled back a little bit so I can fit in a lot of the community suggestions. Um, the Gargos I did was a lot of just big Hydra Stompy, so there were definitely things that were like, hey, Hydra Stompy, Hydra Stompy Plus. So those are going to make it into, even though that one's complete. I think I played it on the stream last week. Mm. But um, yeah, there's going to be, there's just so much. Yeah. I think I, I actually kind of want to put all of my commanders out there. That I already have built, except for Brea, because I'm not changing anything about that. Nobody can tell me. No, otherwise. my Brea deck. <laughs> my Brea deck is basically. I think it's it's like sealed now. It's yeah, just like, it's just. I, I just keep foiling things now, so it's like yeah. as soon as the foil copy enters that deck, it's like, well, this card's staying here forever. Basically, uh, that's why I can't get rid of my my Tajik deck. Yeah, How, but you have that. Commander I have a, a thirteen thing. layer deep like three D commander. I I can't take it apart. Yeah, it would be way better if I built a like a Selesnya version. Sure. But, but I have to. a 3D commander, so that deck is here forever. And just and just asking people, hey, what's the spicy include that you're never going to see come up higher than 1% of inclusion on, like, EDA track, right? I, I Give me something that nobody else is going to see coming. So <laughs> I think putting that out to people, because we all brew so differently, and that's, again, one of the best things about this format, is that, you know, you may see a commander hit the table. It might not be what you think it's going to be. Sure, Joyra has all artifacts and is just going to storm off. Or maybe someone just wanted to fake you out and it's red-blue and it's something completely different. Or they use a pool of cards that you've never even seen before. That's one of the best things about this format, and I think that's what I enjoyed so much about on a whim kicking this out to the community and saying, oh, it's nuts. hey, what do you guys, what, what would you do? What's the one card you would throw in here that is just 
bonkers for flavor that's not on someone else's deck tech or that you you know are looking for a home for and holy crap here it is you'd never have expected it it's amazing <laughs> It's way better than the threads I've been getting on Twitter, which are like, stop banning my deck into oblivion. I'm like, yo, that's not my decision. Chill, oh, yeah. we're good times. I, I, I will never hold it against <laughs> you that you banned my, my beautiful Paradox Engine from my Brea deck. It's fine. That's just the way it is. You and put the Mystic Pizza oven in, you're fine. Exactly. And you know what? <laughs> Honestly, if, if my playgroup decides to have a night where we don't adhere to the ban list, then I can just slot it back in and we're off to the races. No big yeah, deal. dude, I'm bringing out Rule Profit zero. Accrufix. It'll be good times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we're all three of us actually going to be at GP Vegas. Yeah. Phil is also going to be there. We're very sad that he's been gone these past few weeks. He's had a lot of issues with his computer and just like <laughs> been life things. And uh, we're hoping to see him back very soon. Uh, in the meantime, this has been Commander and MTG. Uh, thank you so much for joining us for this impromptu live stream. And for those of you guys listening at home later on, we're sorry you missed the impromptu live stream, but we <laughs> hope that this captures it on your uh, podcast dials. And we're really sorry for all the ums and ahs as we sit here and look at yeah. each other and try to talk something out. And yeah, well, this, like is, a this real is kind of just like, <laughs> this is kind of like, a we're just going to have fun and talk about the deck we want to build anyways. So this is kind of like a, a slice of what it's like to just hang out with us outside of the podcast. Uh, Which is actually just like being in the podcast. We just don't broadcast it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, once again, I'm Shivan Putt. You can find me on uh, Twitter at Girapuri Gears or at Commander in MTG. You can find Olivia here at Gobert Hicks. And you can find our friend Andrew here at Sigma Caldera. Um, thank you for uh, listening. We appreciate everything. We appreciate all of our patrons. You can join us on Discord if you'd like to. Go to commanderinmtg.com forward slash donations if you guys want to chip in. And uh, go buy a quiver because they're the best way to hold your decks when you're off in uh, Vegas. And like they make the sure this happens, so thank you. Yeah, so thank you guys, and have a good night. Thank you. Take care.